What's up, vapers? Thanks for checking out Spin Fuels Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick, and today is Fresh Build Friday. That's right, we got a brand new coil for you to try out today. Now, this is a kind of a redo of my previous build. I did a 20 gauge build a long time ago. I really didn't know quite what I was doing with the 20 gauge at the time, so I'm here today to try something a little bit different. Uh, we got some hot wires to try out today. I know uh, some of you had suggested to me the hot wires in, in the past, so uh, I'm bringing you a little bit of two birds with one stone, uh, a hot wires build and a 20 gauge build. And this is gonna be one for all you cloud chasers out there. Uh, you get amazing vapor production. This is my standard go-to build whenever I just wanna chuck some clouds. Uh, really nothing fancy and it's a very pretty easy build I'd say for anyone that's uh, familiar with macro coils. So grab your wick, grab your Addy, your mod, and let's go ahead and build this thing up. All right guys, so as you can see, I have all my tools and everything I need for this build all laid out. Uh, here we have our hot wires by Chadster, and this is the 20 gauge KMA. I'm not really sure what that stands for, but maybe if you know, drop it in the comments below. Uh, we're gonna be building on our Kennedy 24 on the Tugboat V2, but for now, we're just gonna get rid of that, move everything out of the way that we don't need right now. So for this build, you're gonna need about uh, eight inches of wire, I'd say. It's not too huge of a coil. We're only doing five wraps of this stuff, so you really don't need a whole lot of wire. So just grab a little section of wire, and we're just gonna clip it. And I know you guys are gonna, you know, hate on me for using a coil jig, but honestly, it saves me a lot of time and a lot of hassle, so uh, I, I really like using these things. And the coils come out really clean too, so do our standard half wrap around like so. And then you're just gonna go one, two, three, four, five. You wanna bring that coil right back around from where you started from there. And now we just grab our flat toothed or toothless pliers here. And I do my normal little 90 degree bend. And then you're gonna leave a little bit of room and just bend it right back. Now that's to help center the coil a little bit better. Um, I really think that centering the coils, especially with the Kennedy, uh, definitely helps. So now we just take it off the bit and put it right back on to adjust that positive post, or positive lead rather. So you straighten out your, your negative lead. And now what I usually do is just add a little 45 degree angle on the positive lead and then just another 45 degree angle back so I get a nice uh, centered coil. I think that really does help with centering my coils. So there we go, there's one of our coils all set. Now I'm just gonna repeat that process and do another coil. And just like that, with a little bit of video magic, we have our two coils here. So now we're ready to install. Let's just bring in our mod. So first thing you want to do is make sure your terminals are loosened up. We're looking pretty good. So I'm just going to take one of my coils and insert it here. All right, so now that the coil's in place, you wanna tighten down the negative screw. You want these good and tight too. This wire can take a lot of abuse, so. Then what I do is I just bend up the uh, positive terminal like that, and we're ready to go for our next coil. Sometimes you have to just kind of lift up on that first coil there to get the other coil to sit underneath it. And there we go. So now you just want to position that one 
how you like it. And when it's good, just tighten it down. Oops. So just keep an eye on your coil placement, making sure everything's still in place where you like it and uh, you have enough lead space where everything is gonna be good. And when you're happy, just go ahead and tighten down the positive terminal. There we go. So now you can clip off your leads, your excess wire here on the negatives. That's the easy part. So you just wanna grab it, clip it. And what I usually like to do is just kind of bend off the rest of that wire just like that. And if the screw is tight enough, it's gonna bend off really easily. And as you can see there, that coil's wobbling around on the other side, that means gotta tighten up the screw. So now that we have our wires cut, you just wanna reinsert that uh, drill bit or whatever you wrapped around and adjust the coil a little bit, making sure it doesn't hit the airflow holes or anything like that. Um, if you're building on something besides the uh, Kennedy, you gotta worry about the airflow control and things like that. So you want to just lift up the coils if they're sitting a little low and make sure they're even on both sides so it fires nice and evenly. So right now we're looking pretty good. All right, so let's fire it up and see how these things glow. You just want to start with small pulses. You don't want to glow them too bright right away. And if you get any little hot spots, you could just brush across your coil like that with something metal and that should help. All right, we're looking pretty good. So uh, I think we're ready to wick it. So let's go ahead and do that. So today I've got some of the native wicks that I got in my craft vapory box. And that's what I'm going to be using for wicking today. Pretty much our standard wicking technique like we always do. Keeping it fluffy as always. So I'm just going to get a little bit of this cotton out here. And you're just going to grab a section, you know, about like that, you know, just a little puffy section. It's hard to judge with these things. Usually when I'm using Japanese cotton, it's a little bit easier because I can kind of guess just based on the width of the sheet that I'm using how much I'll need. But with this stuff here, just kind of grabbing a bunch of it and hoping it works similarly to cotton bacon, but um, doesn't make it any harder to wick, I guess. So you want it in there tight, but not too tight. And you want to just find an area that work, works really well for you. And right about there seems pretty good for me. Um, it's tough to explain how much cotton you actually need. Uh, it's honestly one of those things where it's like muscle memory. You get it down and then that's how you do it from then on out. But for me to explain to you how much cotton you need exactly is a really uh, a tough, ta a tough task. Um, but, you know, I'd say an average just start off with more and then work your way down to find the thickness that works for you. Um, usually you can get like a sort of a conical kind of shape to it and that kind of helps as well. So there's our big fluffy wicks. Now let's just trim them. So you want to cut it right about at the edge of the deck. Just like that. So I got a, a handy tip uh, in my one of my last videos to fluff up the cotton using a piece of extra wire that you clip off. And that's actually a good tip because I like to uh, fluff up my wicks a little bit before I insert them into my deck. 
uh, just to kind of get away any of the little tiny loose fibers. And it also helps, especially for the, the smaller decks like the tugboat. So uh, thank you guys for all the continued uh, s uh, suggestions. Uh, I always love seeing how other people build and, you know, get some tips from them uh, just to kind of adjust my style. So with this here, you can just gently tuck it into the well and that makes it stay nice and fluffy. All right, so today we have some delicious bluebird. If you haven't tried this stuff yet, try it, it's amazing. Um, so now we're just gonna saturate all this cotton here. So before we go back to the main screen and have a vape on this thing, uh, let's go ahead and see some vapor production. Let's just zoom out the camera a little bit. All right, let's do this thing. Let's put the top cap back on. Let's go back to the main screen and vape this thing. All right guys, you just watched me build it. Now let's talk about this build a little bit more. So my first category is the heat. This one is a scorcher. And I know a lot of you out there might be a warm to hot vapor fan, but this one is probably a little bit even too warm for you. Honestly, I really restrict this one only for cloud competitions. Um, so it's not my everyday, all day kind of vape, but for the occasional cloud competition, I think this is my go-to. Uh, now, I did me measure this one on the Relo, and it did meter in right at 0.1 ohms, which is a little bit too low for my liking. I usually like to build about 0.16 or 0.18, something like that. Um, usually works out a little bit better for me, but like I said, um, you know, this one is just for the cloud competitions. You're not going to be using this one all day. Uh, so, and on that topic, make sure you're using 30 amp batteries with this build. Uh, obviously, it's very, very low resistance, and it's even uh, too low, I would say, safety-wise for an all-day build. Um, really, only build this for cloud-blowing competitions. You really don't want to be using this one all day. It's going to put a lot of stress on those batteries. So as far as the ramp up and ramp down time are concerned, it does have a very fast ramp up time, which is gonna be even better for you uh, cloud compers out there. But the ramp down time is a little bit slow. You can definitely hear a little bit of a sizzle to it. So it's, it's kind of that technique of getting that wicking down just right and getting it to where you want it. Uh, I think that might help with the sizzle a little bit, but I, I think more people are gonna be more concerned about the ramp up time. And in that fact, it is very fast on the ramp up time. And as far as the flavor is concerned on this one, uh, honestly, it's not the best flavor, I gotta say. Uh, not the greatest flavor out of it. I mean, I love Bluebird a lot, and I'm not getting the full-on flavor out of it. I feel like the heat almost kind of kills some of the flavor in there. I get more of the, uh, you know, cheesecake. This is a blueberry cheesecake, if you didn't watch my review. This is a blueberry cheesecake with a hint of Captain Crunch, and I get more of the cheesecake than the blueberry. Um, honestly, uh, I don't think a lot of people would care considering that, you know, you don't you normally get to choose which juice you vape for cloud competitions, but if you're doing this just as a friendly cloud comp or something like that with your friends, uh, you're not going to get great flavor out of it. Hate to say it, but it's, it's true. Um, so yeah, as far as the difficulty of this build, not very difficult. If you're familiar with macro coils and you can manage uh, the 20 gauge wire, it is pretty thick, so it can be a little bit difficult to work with, but I find that using the jig definitely helps. But if you're familiar with a macro coil build, I think you can figure this one out. But again, I don't recommend it for everyday use. Uh, strongly, strongly advise you against using this one all day, every day, just because it puts so much stress on your batteries. So uh, that about does it for this video, guys. I'm just gonna blow a few more clouds here and then we'll sign out.
So if it wasn't obvious enough, I am getting crazy vapor production out of this one. This one is definitely for all you cloud compers and cloud chasers out there. Uh, so anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like button if you like this video and subscribe for more. Don't forget to leave a comment in the box below on what you thought of this build and whether or not you build uh, similar builds like this whenever you're entering a cloud competition. And if you want to check out more of my videos, make sure you go to spinfuel.com. I have all my stuff up there as well as Smoke and Joey and Spinfuel official videos. And as always, vape on.